Hello, Internet! Posting this around 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. It's chapter 15 of TikTok of Oz. I'm recording a little bit early in the van here while I wait outside my daughter's gymnastics studio. Um, because I will be not available at 8 o'clock tonight to go live. But I'm going to go ahead and read chapter 15, The Dragon Defies Danger. <clears throat> Although the journey through the tube was longer this time than before, it was so much more comfortable that none of our friends minded it at all. They talked together most of the time, and as they found the dragon good-natured and fond of the sound of his own voice, they soon became well acquainted with him and accepted him as a companion. "'You see,' said Shaggy in his frank way, "'Quox is on our side, and therefore the dragon's a good fella. If he happened to be an enemy instead of a friend, I'm sure I should dislike him very much, for his breath smells of brimstone. He's very conceited.' <coughs> And he's so strong and fierce that he would prove a dangerous foe. Uh, yes, indeed, returned Quox, who had listened to this speech with pleasure. I suppose I'm about as terrible as any living thing. I'm glad you find me conceited, for that proves I know my good qualities. As for my breath smelling of brimstone, I really can't help it. And, one, and I once met a man whose breath smelled of onions, which I consider far worse. I don't, said Betsy. I love onions. And I love brimstone, declared the dragon. So don't let us quarrel over one another's peculiarities. Saying this, he breathed a long breath that shot a flame fifty feet from his mouth. <coughs> Excuse me. The brimstone made Betsy cough, but she remembered about the onions and said nothing. They had no idea how far they had gone through the water of the or through the center of the earth nor when to expect this trip to end. At one time, the little girl remarked, Well, I wonder when we'll reach the bottom of this hole. And isn't it funny, Shaggy Man, that what is the bottom to us now was, well, it was the top when we fell the other way. Well, what puzzles me, said Files, is that we are able to fall both ways. That, announced TikTok, is because the world is round. Exactly, responded Shaggy. Machinery in your head is in fine working order, TikTok. You know, Betsy, that there is such a thing as the attraction of gravitation, which draws everything toward the center of the earth. That's why we fall out of bed and why everything clings to the surface of the earth. Well, then why doesn't everything go on down to the center of the earth? inquired the little girl. I was afraid you were going to ask me that, replied Shaggy in a sad tone. The reason, my dear, is that the earth is so solid that other solid things can't get through it. When there's a hole, such as in this case, we drop right down to the center of the world. But why don't we stop there? asked Betsy. Because we go so fast, we acquire speed enough to carry us right up to the other end. Well, I don't understand that. It makes my headache to try to figure it out, she said after some thought. One thing draws us to the center, and nothing pushes us away from it, but... Don't ask me why. Please, interrupted Shaggy Man. If you can't understand it, let, let it go with that. Well, do you understand it? She inquired. All the magic isn't in fairyland, he said gravely. There's lots of magic in all nature, and you may see it as well in the United States where you and I once lived as you can here. Well, I never did, she replied, because you were so used to it all that you didn't realize it was magic. Is anything more wonderful than to see a flower grow and blossom? Or to get light out of the electricity in the air? The cows that manufacture milk for us must have machinery fully as remarkable as that in TikTok's copper body. And perhaps you've noticed that... And then, Sh before Shaggy could finish his speech, the strong light of day suddenly broke upon them, grew brighter, and completely enveloped them. The dragon's claws no longer scraped along the metal tube, for he shot into the open a hundred feet or more and sailed so far away from the slanting hole that when he landed it was on the peak of a mountain and just over the entrance to the many underground caverns of the Gnome King. Some of the officers tumbled off their seats when Quox struck the ground, but most of the dragon's passengers only felt a slight jar. All were glad to be on solid earth again, and they at once dismounted and began to look about them. Queerly enough, as soon as they had left the dragon, the seats that were strapped to the monster's back disappeared 
and this probably happened because there was no further use for them, and because Quox looked far more dignified in just his silver scales. Of course, he still wore the forty yards of ribbon around his neck, as well as the great locket, but these only made him look dressed up, as Betsy remarked. Now the army of gnomes had gathered thickly around the mouth of the tube in order to be ready to capture the band of, soldier, band of invaders as soon as they popped out. There were indeed hundreds of gnomes assembled, but they were led by, and they were led by Guff, their most famous general. But they did not expect the dragon to fly so high, and he shot out of the tube so suddenly that it took them by surprise. When the gnomes had rubbed their astonishment out of their eyes and regained their wits, they discovered the dragon quietly seated on the mountainside, far above their heads, while the other strangers were standing in a group and calmly looking down upon them. General Guff was very angry at the escape, which was no one's fault but his own. Well, come down here and be captured, he shouted, waving his sword at them. Come up there and capture us if you dare, replied Quox. Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't Quox. It, it's getting darker and it's harder to read. I apologize. I hope we, we only got a couple more pages. <laughs> come down here and uh, come up here and capture us if you dare replied Queen Anne, who was winding up the clockwork of her private soldiers so he could fight more briskly. Guff's first answer was a roar of rage at the defense, at the defiance. Then he turned and issued a command to his gnomes. These were all armed with sharp spears, and with one second they raised these spears and threw them straight at their foes, so that they rushed through the air in a perfect cloud of flying weapons. Some damage might have been done had not the dragon quickly crawled before the others, his body being so big that it shielded every one of them, including Hank. The spears rattled against the silver scales of Quox and then fell harmlessly to the ground. They were magic spears, of course, and all straight away bounded back into the hands of those who'd thrown them, but even Guff could see that it was useless to repeat the attack. It was now Queen Anne's turn to attack, so the generals yelled, Forward, march! And the colonels and majors and captains repeated the command, and the valiant army of Oogaboo, which seemed to be composed mainly of TikTok, marched forward in a single column toward the gnomes, while Betsy and Polychrome cheered, and Hank gave a loud hee-haw, and Shaggy shouted, Hooray! And Queen Anne screamed, At him, TikTok! At him! The gnomes did not await the clockwork man's attack, but in a twinkling disappeared into the underground caverns. They made a great mistake in being so hasty, for TikTok had not taken a dozen steps before he stubbed his copper toe on a rock, fell flat to the ground where he cried, Pick me up, pick me up, pick me up, until Shaggy and Files ran forward and raised him to his feet again. The dragon chuckled softly to himself as he scratched his left ear with his hind claw, but no one was paying much attention to Quox just then. It was evident to Anne and her officers that there could be no fighting unless the enemy was present, and in order to find the enemy they must boldly enter the underground kingdom of the gnomes. So bold a step demanded a council of war. Why, don't you think I'd better drop in on Regido and obey the orders of the Jinjin? By no means, returned Queen Anne. We have already put the army of gnomes to flight, and all that remains is to form our way into those caverns and, and, and conquer the gnome king and all his people. Well, that seems to me something of a job, said the dragon, closing his eyes sleepily. Well, go ahead, just you like, and I'll wait here for you. Don't be in any hurry on my account. To one who lives thousands of years, a delay of a few days is nothing at all and I shall probably sleep until the time comes for me to act. Anne was provoked at the speech. You may as well go back to Titi Hoochoo now, she said, for the Gnome King is no is as good as conquered already. But Quox shook his head. Nah, he said, I'll wait. And that is the end of chapter 15, just in time, because I am really running out of daylight here. I do hope you join us again tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, Facebook Live for chapter 16, The Naughty Gnome. Good night, everyone.